right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to give an article titled, Three Women Who've Been Single for Over Three Years Say They're Tired of Being Shamed for Having High Standards. And guys, this article is yet another example of today's world where it's covering three different women and it's going to talk about them. They're all, two, one of them is in her 30s, another's in her 20s, and they actually left out the details for the third one, but I'm going to guess she's somewhere in between, who for years they're single because they feel entitled to what, they, what we all call a high value man, a high status man, a top guy, whatever you want to call it. And they're tired of their friends and family saying they're too picky and things like that. Now, you may say, SSM, why are you covering this? Okay, I mean, why, why, who cares? You know, let, let them be picky, let them be alone. I'll tell you why. Because at the end of the day, we all know who's going to get the blame for them being a single and alone and having no man and eventually no family and all that. We all know. Us. Guys are going to get the blame for this because they're going to say, these are going to be the same gals that are in this article are going to be writing blogs, articles, posting on social media, making YouTube channels, complaining about guys, saying there are no good men out there. Where are all the good men? Men need to man up and go back to school and get an education and make more money and do all these things so they can qualify for my high standards. Okay, and I, I don't think there's any guy watching this video right now, wherever you are in the world, that doesn't know a woman, whether it's a girl in your family, a friend, acquaintance, a coworker, former girlfriend, that fits the mold. I know three different women, three different women, boom, like this, right off the top of my head, I can think of two in their 40s, one in their 30s, that are in this situation, that for as long as I've known them, have just gone through guy after guy after guy because they felt entitled to these top guys. Meanwhile, they were getting older and older and older. And to no surprise, two of the which, and you can guess which age range they are, have pretty much just given up and they have had to result a resolve to medical science to have a child, okay? And I guarantee the other one in their 30s, that's, that's gonna happen one day, but I can't imagine her having kids, but whatever. But they're all good looking, for their age, and believe me, they were hot when they were a lot younger. Let me tell you, give credit where credit's due. And they all went, have college degrees, do very well for themselves, make good money, and all that. And they always felt entitled to a top guy. While we all know, percentage wise, that's impossible. And what top guys here? Six feet tall, six figure income, six packs, uh, six pack, six uh, inches or more down south, amongst many other things, master's degrees, doctorates speaks a foreign language it can go on and on and on it's ridiculous <clears throat> and it's one thing that want somebody to have you have things in common with but it's another with all these ridiculous standards as i get into this you're going to see a couple of these girls th what they want is just absolutely ridiculous and is any wonder that they're alone okay now i want to say this guys before i get into the article this is very important here but at the end of the day you know you, we've had all this bs fns programming going on for decades now and you see it all the time in the media TV, movies, anywhere you go. And pretty much it says that, hey, you know, a woman can make more than a guy and still the relationship will be great. Okay. Well, how many stories have I done where the woman makes more and she feels that the guy that she's with is now less than her? Okay. Or like a story I did just uh, the other day about this woman who's making $205,000 a year in New York City and her boyfriend makes $135,000 a year, which is no small number. And she felt that she was dating down, that it wasn't the life she envisioned. She was settling. And this guy made 135K. He went to college. He has a degree. He's making damn good money as an architect. And that's only going to get better and better for him. So what's the problem? Female hypergamy. So all this programming, this FNS programming, is not going to beat biology and nature, where from the moment we crawled out of the caves, women always want a guy that's going to make them look better in terms of they felt like they get a prize, a higher status guy, a guy that makes a lot more money, a guy that can provide. Now, back then, and we're going way back in time, we crawled out of the caves, this was a guy that was probably a, a great hunter and a great warrior, and he can go out and you can bet your ass he's going to come back with, with a with, with some animal that he, he hunted, and he can provide for her and the family, that he's a tough warrior, so he, that, therefore their children, their offspring are going to be strong and fighters and survive and continue on the line. But nowadays, fast forward to 2021, it is a man that has status in the world, a man that has a high position, a guy that makes a lot of money because that's the equivalent of bringing home you know, what he hunted to feed the family. You get my point. 
They want that. But so, so many women are going to school, and you can look it up, guys. You can look up the percentages that you can look up the stats that more and more women are graduating college and moving on to higher degrees. <clears throat> so, because they've risen in the world, they still want a guy higher than them. So, if they make two hundred thousand dollars a year, they they feel like they're settling. If they got gets a guy that's even just at her level, and look, God forbid, a guy makes one hundred fifty a year. So they want they make two hundred thousand dollars a year. They want a guy who makes three hundred. Then they're getting a prize. Well, how many guys are out there that actually do that? That's in their age range, and those guys probably aren't going to settle down. Especially these women are probably in their thirties. They'll want a girl in her twenties, right? So you you get my point here. It's all about female hypergamy, and it's just these ridiculous delusional uh, ideas of what they're worth. Okay, because at the end of the day, I mean, guys are visual creatures. So you a girl can make. $300,000 a year, have a great status, maybe she started her own company, who knows what it is, have all these things, but if she's a certain age, we're not going to be as attracted to her as maybe she she was when she was younger and prettier and all that. Okay, she may look not bad for her age, but if a guy can have a girl in her 30s, mid-30s, and he can get a girl in her, in her mid-20s, what do you think your average guy is going to do? Duh, right? And then these women are alone. And they start writing blogs and complaining and complaining. There are good men out there. There's plenty of good men out there. Plenty of good guys out there. But to them, they're not. But anyhow, guys, I've gone on long enough. You've got my point here for a lot of newcomers. So I'm going to go to this article. You're going to see more what I'm talking about, just these ridiculous standards. And a few highlights before I get into this. It says, uh, professional single women often get criticized for having too high a standards. Insiders spoke to three women who have been single for years about what they're looking for in a partner. All three said they would rather be single than settle for less than what they deserve. Rather be single. Let me let let's hear from them in when those women in their thirties are in their forties, and those a woman in her twenties is in her thirties. For what they deserve. See what I'm talking about? A diva complex. So it starts off. It says hot back summer is winding down, but some single folks are in no rush to find someone to hunker down with for the winter. Three women who've been single for years told Insider they refuse to settle down if it means compromising what they want in a partner. So it's all or nothing. And they refuse to do it. They are such high value. They see themselves as so great, so high value, so amazing, that they would rather, unless they got met, met everything on their checklist, pfft, he's crap, on to the next one. These sound like women that I know. I'm sure this sounds like women you know. One is quoted as saying, my standards are high for a good reason. An insider, uh, an insider producer said, a 36-year-old Brooklyn, New York media professional, 36 years old, I want to point out, who asked to remain anonymous for privacy reasons, told Insider she's been criticized by men and women alike for her standards. She says, my friends do say that I'm picky, but I don't think that these are picky things because I'm specific how I want to live my life, she told Insider. Well, she's 36 years old, okay? And even if she is really good looking, she hits the gym, takes care of her body, eats well, all that stuff like that, and she looks good for her age and she can get dudes, she's still 36. Your prime was years ago. So you better hustle if you actually want to get a guy and realize, guess what? That's great if she says she's a producer and obviously she probably makes good money, lives in New York, so obviously a higher income in terms of like looking at the averages in the country. But at the end of the day, Guys don't want that. That's not sexy to guys. Okay, I mean, some guys can be impressed. Okay, you've done well for yourself, but that's not going to make guys be like, oh man, I want her. She's so hot because she's a producer. No. She says, uh, it says, each single explained how they responded to criticism surrounding their unpartner status and why they won't settle for less. It's always the same story. I'm not going to settle for less. Uh uh, uh uh. Okay. Let's see how happy you are in a few years when you see your other people, other friends, who are who have families, that have kids, and have all that, and you're alone. Now, look. Let me make this clear: that we all have deal breakers. Okay, that's that's fine. There could be some some people may not want to be with someone that drinks a lot. That's a deal breaker, and that's fine. Or someone that smokes. Or let's just say somebody is. Uh, you get a girl who's very religious, and she wants to be with a guy who's religious as well. That could be a deal breaker. I get that. But if she met a guy that, uh, let's just say he made hundred grand a year, but he he had a trade. He didn't have a college degree, but he had a trade. He made hundred grand a year, which is good. And she made hundred and forty grand a year, and she had a college degree. Well, she would 
wouldn't be interested in him because of that. That's ridiculous. Okay, and let's just say also that she wants someone that's intelligent. She can ha travel the world with and see things with. Maybe go see, go to the art museum with this guy who has a trade, or maybe he dropped out of college, to start his own business, and makes good money. He guess what? He's probably no dummy. He may like some of the same things she does, but because he doesn't have that degree, she's not interested. You see what I'm talking about? And I've known women that had opportunities with guys that made darn good money, that weren't stupid, cool guys, but because they didn't have that degree. The women weren't interested in them. It's ridiculous. And they would go for a guy that made less money, that did have that degree, and not to mention all that debt. The debt he's paying for for 15, 20 years at best. Nope, they don't want the guy with the degree. I mean, the guy with the trade, or the guy that maybe dropped out of school, started his own business, who makes way more than the average guys. Nope, it's all about that status and that perceived value. Anyhow, it says they want equality in a partnership, not another person to take care of. Another person to take care of. If she makes 150 grand a year and he makes 100 grand a year, you're not taking care of him. He's doing just fine. Uh, Kim told Insider she's been single for a little over five years, aside from the occasional situation, situationship or fling. Translation: Riding the carousel. Single for five years. She's 36. Five years. That's how picky she is, right? Mark my word. She's gonna be balling her eyes out in a few years. I'm all alone. That's what some of the girls I know have done in the past. Kim said she, try, she tried going on <clears throat> a few dates during the pandemic, one of which took place at an unfortunate dive bar near Penn Station, NYC. Well, then, obviously, this guy wasn't going to work out if he was taking you to a dive bar, which I got no problem, guys, if you do, because, hey, you know what, big deal, one drink only. But still, she should have known what she was getting into. But she said none of them really stuck. She says she's looking for someone who overall has a stable and ideally high-earning career and can match the love, care, and luxury her friends shower her with. Let me read that again. She's looking for someone that has a stable and ideally high-earning career, ding, 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 and can match the love, care, and luxury her friends shower her with. My friends, this woman sounds like a diva that her friends shower her with. Let me tell you something. There are plenty of guys out there in this world, nice guys. We all know about the nice guys. Most guys are the nice guy types that would do all this. And and let me guess, she wouldn't be interested in them. And she might say, oh, but I make enough money. You could have guys that make darn good money, that are good guys, that would shower her with the affection and luxury and love and care that she mentioned here. And she still wouldn't be interested in them. You know why? Because they don't want the nice guys. They turn them off. And yet they say there's no good men out there. So this is why also why I tell you guys don't take advice from women about women. They say they want one thing, but at the end of the day, what they, they their actions show you what they really want. Now listen to this part. This is ridiculous. She says, my friends literally spoil me and send me flowers if I'm having a rough week or send me surprises. I want the same kind of effort from a partner and want, and want to wait to find someone who's going to treat me the way the other people in my life do because I'm going to be really good to them too. So she wants a dude, if she's having a bad day, to get on the phone or get online and dial up and send her some flowers or surprises and do all these types of things. Who does those things? Nice guys. And yet these nice guys are alone and can't get women because they don't want that. Because she gets a guy who does that, mark my words, he can make more money than her and status and all that. And still, she'd be turned off. We all know... Many of us have done crap like this because we didn't know any better when we were younger. It's what movies told us to do. And we got dumped. And she went for a guy that didn't do this stuff. Uh, like Kim, our Brooklyn-based single told Insider she is looking for a partner who is goal-driven who's goal-driven, and will share financial and emotional responsibility. Well, there's plenty of guys out there that are goal-driven and will share responsibility. As a professional in the entertainment industry, she said she's looking for a partner who's willing to split chores evenly and a, a standard she received some pushback on. She said her father always carried his way about him, where he was just like, anything your mother can do, I can do. They would rather be single than settle. Okay, she wants to do that maybe will help cook, take out the trash, do some dishes. I got no problem with that part, but just the never-ending list of stuff. It's ridiculous. And again, like I said in the beginning, we're going to get the blame. This is uh, rather than settling for less than a partner, the woman Insider spoke to said she would rather invest their time in other fulfilling aspects of their life, like careers, education, and friends. This all sounds like masculine energy. 
career, purpose and success, education, leading to more purpose and success, and, and friends, hanging out with your bros. I, got, I told you guys how, thanks to the Effinist movement, it's been conditioning men to behave more like women, be more commitment and relationship driven, amongst many other things, and emotional. And women to be more like guys, embracing masculine energy, drive, ambition, purpose. Right there. Right there. Uh, another girl, her name is Chanelli Janai, a 27-year-old writer in Orlando, Florida, told Insider her mother instilled a strong sense of self-esteem in her at a young age. Translation, her mom's an effinist. Uh, Janai, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right, said she's looking for a partner who has tangible life goals and will be an equal. So there aren't any guys out there that don't have any tangible life goals and be an equal. Now, this equal thing is, I don't buy it because they don't want an equal. If she makes 200 grand a year, if they do make 200 grand a year, again, she's settling. Okay, that's just enough. That, that would be equal, right? But, no, but ideally, that guy make 300 grand a year and have a higher status. So she felt like she got a prize. And God forbid, you know, an equal would be a guy, like say she makes 200 grand a year and she met a dude who makes 130. God forbid. And he went to college. He's educated, comes from a good family, well-spoken, likes to travel, you know, has a brain. She'd be settling. He wouldn't be an equal in her mind because he doesn't make as much, even though he's on the same level in terms of intelligence, education, all that. Nope. See? She says, those standards don't always rub, a, rub certain men the right way, but I strongly believe that is what's for me. <clears throat> if it was a problem for them, then we weren't meant to be, in, be together in the first place. Now, mind you, she's 27. She's in her prime. Okay? So, since probably she was a teenager and started developing. <clears throat> Holy shit. I need some water. <clears throat> since she was a teenager and started developing, and if she's remotely good looking above average, she's had guys into her. So, she's had her choice. And right now, at 27 years old, it's not a problem. Once she crosses that 3-0 those prospects are going to decline more and more and more. And she's going to look back and say, why didn't I do... Well, she wouldn't say publicly, why didn't I choose this guy or that guy, but she'll be thinking it. Uh, the Brooklyn Single told Insider... The Brooklyn Single told Insider that while she's received criticism from other women about her standards, she takes the feedback with a grain of salt. Of course she does, because she's 27. She says, a lot of people like to dish out advice and they're not even happy about their own situation, she said. I don't believe in just having someone just to have someone. I want to be happy as possible. I got no problem with just wanting to just settle for anybody that walks on by just, just because, you know, you're fearful of getting older and wanting a ring on your finger. That's not fair to you. That's not fair to that person. That's not fair to you. But you, people can meet others. Again, you got the deal breakers, which I get. You know, a non-smoker, someone that's religious because you're religious, or someone that's not a big drinker because you're not a big drinker, or, a, or someone that likes to work out because you like to work out. I get these deal breakers. But no one is going to meet this ridiculously uh, gigantic long list, <clears throat> this long list of demands, okay? Everybody can have a checklist, but there's a point. Nobody's going to be able to have all these check, 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 okay? There's a point where good luck trying to find that person, but... These women have been conditioned over decades of thanks to effinism, saying that you're worth it and that you deserve all this and all the attention they get on social media and dating apps, that if they don't get a guy that meets their 175 boxes on their checklist, then they're settling. That's ridiculous. You get some, some of the major ones, you're pretty good to go. She goes on, uh, high standards aren't what keep people single, an expert said. Yeah, sure. While high standards get the brunt of the blame for keeping people single, an expert disagrees. Well, this expert's probably single. Uh, the expert says, uh, your baseline standards should always reflect your values and desires for partnering in order to find successful relationships. Right, she said, that person said, baseline standards. In other words, deal breakers. And I got a problem with the deal breakers. But a lot of these women nowadays, their deal breakers are 175 different things. says uh, you should also ask yourself how would you like to feel with someone if you want to feel respected and appreciated try and find someone who makes you feel that way make sure you also know what you don't want know what behaviors and traits you're not interested in and if you spot them in someone you may want to move on and find someone else well again this that ended this end of this guys that expert so to speak is talking about deal breakers and i got a problem with, like i just said but 
it isn't just deal. What has become the deal breakers are 175 different things. So guys, this is today's world. This is why I covered this article. This is why I do something like this every so often and mention this to show you an example of today's world for you guys at date, just let you know what, what's out there and the psychotically high standards that are there. But at the end of the day, like I said in the beginning of this video, why I did this is because these women, mark my words, because of these high standards, they're gonna be alone and continue to be alone. And then ultimately, if they're not already, blame guys. There aren't enough good men out there. Where are the good men? They'll be writing blogs, they'll be doing articles, posting on social media. Some may even start YouTube channels and just start complaining about it. And then I'll take those YouTube channels and those articles and I'll do future videos and I'll be saying, see, remember her? Never ending cycle. But that's today's world thanks to the level of entitlement. I don't think ever in human history have we had the gals have such a level of entitlement as we do now. Okay? And this is one of the many, many reasons why so many guys have said, that's it. I'm done. I'm good as it is but by myself here in my nice condo. It's not too big, not too small with my dog or my cat. And I'm making good money, building wealth, going tra doing what I want when I want. I'm tired of that crap. Occasionally, if I want to. Get a release, I can pay for it. You guys can connect the dots, what I mean there. That's that. But anyhow, it's an interesting time. So, all right, guys, that's it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know, guys, in the comment section. Let me know how many of you guys know women like this. Again, family members, friends, acquaintances, girls you work with. And how's it working out for them? Are they complaining yet? No good men out there? Let, let me hear in the comment section. I want to read, definitely want to check that out. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.